Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Michelle Bay Saga and I'm the crafty chick behind Shell's Beads. Today, we are gonna be working a little differently than we have been. I have decided to create a two-part series for the cup that I am about to show you, and that's because I do feel like it's two almost completely different skill sets, and I would love for you to get enough time to play around with what we will be doing today in order to move on to the next step. So before I explain a little bit more, I wanted to show you the adorable pieces that we will be making today. I have been a polymer clay artist for several years, and thanks to the amazing Rachel Tintle of The Creative Siren, I had the courage to put these ideas onto a cup. So I will have all of her social media listed and linked below so you can check out her work. She is truly an amazing artist. So the backstory behind this cup is that I want you guys to get comfortable with sculpting and comfortable with creating these pumpkins before we actually move in to adding any color and paint and glitter and resin. So that's what we will be working on today, guys, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Unfortunately, I had an accident in my studio and the finished cup that I had ready ended up cracking. Um, this was totally my fault. It ended up falling off from a very high countertop in my garage, and unfortunately, it was not presentable for this video. So the final reveal will be on Tuesday, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. So if you guys are ready to get started on this sculpting, let's go in. Okay guys, to get started on this project, these are the materials that you will need. You're going to need a tumbler. I am choosing to do a mug today because I think it's really fun for this season. You're going to need Super Sculpey Clay from Sculpey. It also is known as Doll Clay. So depending on where you live, that might be what you would look for. Make sure to save the packaging because it does have all of your baking instructions on how to bake your piece. You're also gonna want an, uh, an assortment of tools. I have a double-ended silicone and ball tool. These I think actually are from Sculpey themselves. Um, and I will have that listed and linked below. These are clay tools that came in a multi-pack and they're probably two of the ones that I use the most. These are double-ended ball tools that are used in nail art, but are absolutely perfect for polymer clay sculpting. As you can see, there's different size tips in a variety of sizes. Now we have silicone pushers. Again, these are just to help manipulate the clay. And lastly, my favorite tool ever, which is actually a dental tool that I got years ago for my hot glass work, and it literally is my favorite tool for clay. Once you have all of this, we're gonna move into conditioning our clay. As you can see, I have some balls started here, so I'll just show you briefly how I cut it off the block using my X-Acto knife and get um, a rough shape, that a size that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to set that off to the side and work with the balls we already have. And to condition the clay, you just wanna move it in between your fingers and really get it warm and soften this up. It's very important for the clay to be conditioned or it might not bake properly. Once you have the clay conditioned, we are gonna roll this into a ball and kind of uh, flatten it out into a pumpkin shape. I want to make sure that this is the right size for my tumbler, and as I was flattening this out, I realized it was just a little too big, so taking my X-Acto knife, I trimmed some off and re-rolled the ball and created another pumpkin shape. As you can see, I'm flattening it, but I don't want it to be too thin because we are going to be placing it on the cup and we wanna make sure we have enough material to also pat it down like you see me doing here. The clay adheres really well to the cup, so there is no need to put any kind of adhesive at this point. We're going to come in now with the smallest ball end and silicone tool, and we're gonna create the indent on the top and the bottom. For the top, this will be where the stem goes, and on the bottom, this is just that bottom of the pumpkin where all of the lines are going to meet in the middle and create that really nice uh, pumpkin butt look. Um, moving in, these are two of the tools that I use to create this next step. One is that clay blade tool that's very pointy and triangularly with the spade on the back, and then the other one was my dental tool. As you can see here, I'm using this to map out the lines that I need for the ridges on the pumpkin. I start in roughly what is the center, create my line, and then I come out from the sides in a half moon arc shape. 
and gently push these lines towards the bottom of that pumpkin. Uh, with clay, you will need to work in multiple steps to get the look that you like. So just keep manipulating the clay until you get the look that you are looking for. Now go back and accentuate those lines again so that we have a clear grid to work with as we lay out our face. The next step is going to be the add the facial features of the jack-o'-lantern and using my blade tool, we are going to come in and draw two triangles for the eyes. I'm using those lines that we have as kind of my guide work to place our triangles and have them as even on our pumpkin face as possible. I come in and do the second eye the same way. As you can see, I'm using that line as my guide. After we do the eyes, we are gonna map out the mouth. And to do that, we are gonna think of like a half moon crescent shape and start from the corner and come down. To create the teeth, I draw on a small square with the top side missing, keep drawing my half moon shape and come down for a second tooth. You could add as many teeth as you want, but keep in mind we are needing to remove clay later, so sometimes less is more. To close this mouth off, we are gonna be drawing a half moon shape to connect those lines together. Moving on, we are going to be removing clay in order to create that hollowed out look. To do that, I take my X-Acto knife and I literally draw around these lines that we made with the blade tool and I start to scoop out material. Um, this is kind of a tedious process, guys, so you just want to be patient. And as you can see, it looks kind of like a hot mess right now, but we're just gonna roll with it. So um, doing this, you're just gonna wanna remove as much clay as you feel you need to do. And then we're gonna come in with one of our ball tools and we're gonna clean that up. Um, the ball tool is really fun because it kind of glides over the clay and that's what we are doing here is smoothing that all out so that when we apply paint later, um, it'll look like a hollowed out jack-o'-lantern. Once we have that looking the way we would like, um, keep in mind it's clay, so if you mess up, you can just push something back into shape to get it to lay where you would like it to. Once we have this done, we are going to come in and do the second eye. Now we are ready to remove some of the clay from the mouth. To do this, I start in the middle of that tooth and I take my X-Acto knife and make a cut that just comes down to that bottom line we made. Then I follow the contour of that line. I angle my blade just slightly so that I remove material and as you can see, I'm following those lines we drew. I'm gonna very carefully with the tip of my blade pick this up moving away from the tooth so that we remove the material away from that little protrusion. Once we have that, as you can see here, it's a little fiddly. I use the tip of my blade to manipulate clay to just keep it in shape and make sure we're not getting that tooth too out of sorts. From here, we're gonna move on to the center section. And again, as you can see, I'm following those contour lines that we already put in as the guide for my blade so that I know where to cut. We were trying to remove as much clay as possible before we come in with the ball tool so that we don't disturb those teeth too much. Continue removing clay with your blade. And as you can see, this really does get very um, kind of out of sorts and a little messy, but that's okay because we will be cleaning this up kind of in the same fashion we did with the eyes, except for we're going to be using whatever tool we feel will get into those nooks and crannies. The end, the other end of my blade tool has what I like to call a scoopy spade. And again, you can see me kind of scooping out some of that clay that was kind of hard to remove with the blade. 
and we're coming in with our final section. As you can see, I did have to remove some additional clay along the bottom just to kind of make the mouth make sense. And this is all part of kind of feeling your design. We are now ready to cut out that final piece. And we're just going to keep removing clay the way that you saw me do for the rest of the mouth. And then we will come in and clean up all of this excess clay that is inside. And keep a note as to the tools that I grab to do this. I do vacillate back and forth between several of the tools that I have on my bench. Um, also keep in mind that whatever tools feel comfortable for you should be the tools that you use. If you have other tools in your arsenal that get this job done, please feel free to use them. It's really not so much about what tools you have, but what tools feel comfortable in your hand. To finish shaping the mouth, you're gonna to wanna to take those tools and just smooth it out as best as you can to get out that hollowed look that we are going to need when we paint these. Now let's move on to adding our nose. To do this, take the end of that dental tool and we're gonna be making upside down teardrops and just accentuating the bottom of that teardrop with one of our ball tools. As you can see here, I come back in with that and just elongate the nose. Now let's go on to the stem. Take roughly a pea size amount, maybe a little smaller, and create a nice little log shape with this. Um, it also kind of looks like a big tic-tac. We're going to be placing this in the indent that we created on the top of our pumpkin in the very beginning. We're just going to kind of set it inside, and the next step is gonna help anchor it down. Taking the larger end of our yellow ball tool, we are going to draw stripes down the stem connecting it to the body of the pumpkin. This creates the ridges in the stem that you would see on a natural pumpkin and also helps us blend that in to the base of the pumpkin. We are also going to be elongating this stem while it is on the cup to create a really twisty kind of gnarly stem for our pumpkin. This is why we kept it kind of short and fat because we will be pulling this out. Now I come in with my blade tool and I simply uh, accentuate these lines a little deeper. And here we are gonna be pinching and pulling. Uh, the clay is very malleable, so it should not come apart from your pumpkin if you've properly anchored it. Once you have it elongated, make sure to come back in with that ball tool and readjust your lines because in the next step, those lines will give us the most beautiful twist in this stem. Keep adding those lines until you're happy with it. As you can see, mine are not straight, but they don't need to be. Uh, figure out which direction your twist is meant to go in and just twist from the tip on. Keep your twist going in the same direction the whole time so you don't untwist what you've done. Now I come in with my blade tool again and I just Keep adding those little detail marks that give us that look of a twisted vine. Now we need to take a small piece of clay, roughly the size of a pea, condition it, and we are going to be creating the vine that we will use for our leaf and for a kind of swirly vine that's gonna go across the pumpkin. To do this, roll out a thin rope of clay. I would say that this is about the thickness of a pencil lead. Um, I don't really have anything to compare it to other than you just want it to be nice and thin. Um, you can also compare it to one of your ball tools if you need an idea of the diameter. I cut that in half and I'm going to anchor this to one side of my pumpkin and where you place this is all personal preference. I'm creating a little swirly cue in there, creating a second one that goes in the opposite direction for interest and 
laying it down, kind of pointing upward so that I can have a place to attach my leaf. This can be a little fiddly, so just get, be patient with it, and I promise it will work out in the end. Once you have it all where you want it, gently tamp it down so it is adhered to the pumpkin, and we're gonna move in to making the leaf. To do that, you're going to take another small pea-sized ball, and we are going to flatten it into a teardrop shape. To do this, squish it between your fingers, and elongate the tip just slightly. Everything is just done by pinching, so there's no need to use any tools for shaping it into a petal. I'm going to place it about a quarter inch down onto that vine that we have coming out and just lay it right over top of it. Press down with your fingers, and now we're gonna come in with our blade tool and we're going to make some cut marks in here that will be the shape of the leaf. I'm not actually sure what you call those individual seg segments of a leaf. So just those little bits that stick out from a leaf. Once we do that, we're going to shape those so they look a little bit more like leaves and take our ball tool and run it along the side of that vine that we have underneath. This is a little difficult to explain, but what we are going for is to create kind of a ridge like you see here that mimics the veining of a leaf. Um, you will be able to feel where that clay is and work on either side of it. Once you've created your vein, we're gonna come in and just re-accentuate those leaf bits and kind of mold that tip of the leaf into a more realistic shape. I do come in with one of my silicone tools and I just kind of smooth that out a little bit so that I don't have a ton of my little fingerprints everywhere. I use every part of my tools in order to give me what I need. Then I come in with my ball tool again and I rub out those leaves just so they're nice and adhered and also have some texture. Now that our pumpkin is done, we are going to come in and clean up all of our lines and add detail to this pumpkin to give it a super realistic look and just kind of make it feel that we actually carved it from a pumpkin itself. As you can see here, I'm using my dental tool to accomplish this, cleaning up all of our areas, reshaping anything that got a little out of control when we were making the leaf or just, you know, making sure we have it right. Um, I also come in and along all of my cut lines, I add these little tick marks to kind of make it look wrinkly, which if you see a pumpkin that's been carved for a little bit of time, the skin kind of wrinkles up around those edges. I just come in and elongate my nose a little bit and our first pumpkin is done. We're going to be creating pumpkins all around this cup. So I will show you in the next clip how to create another type of pumpkin, and then I will send you off to create the rest of your pumpkin patch. For our second pumpkin, we are going to prep it the same way we did the first. Um, keep in mind, they do not all have to be the same shape. So you can create a pumpkin that's a little taller or a little squatter. Um, I did not like the placement of this when I first set it down. So I actually turned it around so that it sat just a little bit taller than the one next to it. From here, the steps are the same to create the top and bottom and our ridges. Once we have our ridges in place, we are going to be taking that small double end ball tool and we are gonna create some oval indentations for eyes. This is one of my favorite ways to create a pumpkin because it really kind of looks like a hollowed out eye socket and is perfect for a spooky Halloween look. This is also how you would create a Jack style pumpkin. And we're just going to be uh, using that ball tool to push that clay in, uh, kind of like we were sculpting, except for we're just using the clay we have there instead of removing clay. 
you want to do this nice and smooth to create a socket look as you can see me pressing up on those edges just to give that hollowed out look. From there, we're gonna come in with my blue ball tool and it is the largest one and we're gonna create a small oval for the nose. I almost said circle. Um, and then that is just going to be as simple as that. Now, I do wanna accentuate my lines a little bit just so I keep everything straight. And we're gonna take that same blade tool and we're gonna draw a wavy line going all along the bottom of the pumpkin for his smile. Uh, I do like this effect because it makes a quick and easy pumpkin, but it also has a lot of detail. From there, we are going to come in with our dental tool and we are going to make the same little tick marks, only these are going to be slightly longer. I call them my stitches and we are going to stitch up this pumpkin's mouth. I am not sure, but somewhere I read that it was tradition to stitch a corpse's mouth closed, which is why we see that in some of the old time movies and things like that. So I thought I'd just throw that in there, guys. Just a little cool fact. Um, now we are going to come in and add our stem, just like we did for the other pumpkins. I did not add a leaf or vine to this because I felt like there was a lot of detail in the pumpkin next door to him. So this one was able to just get by with only a stem. Once we have the stem in place, we're going to do something just a little different than the first one. I'm gonna come in with that same yellow ball tool, but as you can see here, I'm making really deep tick marks coming from the bottom this time and drawing up my lines instead of coming from the top down. We're gonna do this because this is not going to be twisted and elongated like we did the first stem. Instead, we are going to make the stem look like it has just come off of the vine and is kind of hollowed out from being dried out. And as you can see here, the very tip, I take it and at a slight angle, I mash down in there to create an indentation. This gives the illusion that the stem is hollow and it gives a much more three-dimensional look. I like to vary my stems like this because I think every pumpkin is unique and the interest really adds something to your cup. That's it guys. This is as easy as it gets sculpting pumpkins and it gives you such an open door to create just about any kind of features that you would like. As you can see here, I'm adding back on some pumpkins that I made earlier. I removed them from the cup because they weren't in the order that I wanted them to be on. And as long as you do that carefully, it's a totally doable thing. Make sure to get pumpkins all the way around your cup, leading from handle to handle, avoiding the space under the handle as it's too difficult to work under there. Once you have all your pumpkins placed, you will be ready for the next video that I have coming out on Tuesday. Thank you so much, guys. I cannot wait to see the amazing pumpkins that you sculpt, so make sure to tag me on social media so I can see all of your beautiful pieces. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel, comment below, and hit that bell button so you never miss a minute of the fun. Until next time, guys, stay creative. Bye.